Now, when I'm talking about thin walled parts, there's two different types of thin walls that I want to talk about. One is a flat plate, a plate that starts off thick, and then we have to machine it flat perfectly. So you might have a plate that's 10 by 10 or 20 by 20, and your flatness and parallel has to be within one thousandths. So when the material comes to our shop and we inspect the material, you're gonna realize it is far from being within tolerance. How do you take a flat plate and make it perfect? A good example can be found on aerospaceacademy.com where we actually teach you how to make real ISO grids. The material came in, we inspected it. It was at like 18 thousandths out of flatness. So we took the material and instead of putting it in a vise and having nothing under it, we actually laid it flat on the table in the CNC machine. And then we took Mighty Bike clamps that actually slide right into the T-slots and come from the side and they have a low profile. Well, we took the clamps and actually slid them in and we put pressure. Now, as we put the pressure on with the clamps, we actually had a Mitchell Toil dial indicator on the material right in the center. So we put the pressure and then we allowed the indicator to move just a few tenths to a thousandths. Took the indicator out, took a can of metal shell mill, dropped down and we faced that surface. A lot of times you see us getting after it, but in this specific case, we didn't have clamping force. So we wanted to keep the force off the tool. So we ran it nice and slow with coolant right across the surface. We just kissed it, boom. Boom, boom. We flipped them over. We did the same thing, put the dial indicator. We kissed it. We flip flopped it two more times and we were able to bring it in perfectly within a thou, 0 0.001. In that particular case, we actually put in these perfect holes at the exact same time. Then we took the plate, we flipped it over and then put it onto a custom fixture with ID expansion clamps. We put it over the ID expansion clamps. We expanded the clamps, locked it in place, and then we were able to machine the part complete perfectly. Now there's some guys and girls out there that have a lot of experience and they're listening to this and they're like, Titan, why didn't you just use a vacuum to suck the plate down perfectly so you could just skim it? This particular part we needed in a free state to be absolutely perfect. If you have a plate with a bow in it, let's say it's 10 thousandths, and you actually put it on a vacuum and turn the vacuum off and it sucks the plate down, you're putting pressure on the material. Then when you bring the fly cutter or the shell mill across and you kiss it and you release it, boom, it springs and you still have that bow. So when you have flawed or bowed material, vacuum plates are great for making a part parallel. It's not good for making parts perfectly flat. All right, so now that we talked about taking a plate and making it flat and parallel, let's actually talk about parts. When you're doing thin walled parts and you have tight tolerances, there is a go-to. And that is rough, rough, finish, finish. Meaning you have the raw stock, you machine all the material away while you have it clamped hard because you're roughing and getting after it. You flip it over in many cases, but not all, and rough the other side, bringing all of the walls close to the finished tolerance, maybe leaving 30 thousandths, 50 thousandths, depending on the application. Next, you put the part back in, you refixture it, and you clamp on it. But when you clamp on it, you actually have an indicator that you put onto the part and you have a torque wrench. So when you clamp, you watch the indicator and you allow it to move based on experience. So if you have a part that you're keeping plus or minus two on, you might wanna just clamp it so it goes about five tenths or just a few tenths, put a little bit of pressure and then you come back and you kiss that baby into tolerance, gently keeping all of the pressure out so that you can release it and take out a beautiful part to spec. All right, so that's what we say, rough, rough, finish, finish. A couple other techniques that I've talked about is dovetailing. Whenever you have a part and you're grabbing a bunch of material in a vise, then you go and machine the top of the part. You can even relax the vise and retighten with very little pressure and machine it again. But you have a bunch of material on the bottom. So when you flip the part over and you deck all of that material off, the part moves. 
So how can we fix that? Well, the material that you're leaving on the bottom is being clamped by a smooth vise. And therefore, because you're machining the part, you put a lot of pressure on that vise because there's nothing really digging in. It's all about pressure. So you have to put a bunch of pressure on it. So what we do is we actually cut dovetails into our fixtures or into our jaws. And then we take the material and we order the material smaller, leaving only 50 thousandths, sometimes even 30 thousandths. And we cut that dovetail into the part. And then we take the part or the raw material, we slide it into the perfectly matched dovetails on the fixture, or we clamp the soft jaws perfectly into that dovetail. And we hold it with very little pressure from the beginning because the dovetail acts kind of like a T-slot where the material goes down into an opening or a groove where it's perfectly matched and it's like an anchor right there and it can't come out. And therefore, you don't need a bunch of pressure. You just lightly clamp, boom, you machine the part, you take it out, you flip it over, you barely have material on the other side, you deck it and you have a perfect part.